Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Marlon Hoves, aka MJob Online. Uh, I work with Antares Gaming, uh, and I, we've brought these this wonderful group of people together to talk about uh, a few important things to us. Uh, things like gaming, mental health awareness, uh, and how the two can combine and create a, a bigger uh, a bigger cause, a, a bigger ruckus for the community to pay attention to. Uh, so if, if you don't mind, could each of you introduce yourselves? Hi, I am Gabriella Wright. I am an actor, a mother, and also the co-founder of the Never Alone Initiative of the Shoko Foundation, which is all about suicide prevention and mental well-being at our core. And, and our mission is to democratize access to these mental well-being tools to create more awareness around mental hygiene and, and to really reach as many people as possible. Because ultimately, I believe that um, a healthier, joyful world means that we can all live um, a highest version of ourselves. And I think at the end of the day, everyone wants that. So that's who I am. <laughs> I'm Deepak and I'm a medical doctor training in endocrinology, neuroscience, neuroendocrinology, but uh, got, uh, got distracted in the research phase of my life by what I now call the molecules of emotion. That was my research. And that's how I got interested in the connection between consciousness and biology, consciousness and mind, consciousness and the world. So although I'm a medical doctor, a lot of people think I'm a witch doctor, uh, which is all right. And um, I do cast spells now and then. I <laughs> think that life is a game. And uh, yeah. unless we play it with humor, with a sense of wonder and adventure, it's a wasted life. Yeah. And uh, the fact that so many people are depressed, especially teenagers, is that uh, we have bamboozled them with the idea that their selfie is their self. Yes. And uh, so we're living in a world where our self has been sacrificed for our selfies. Nobody even knows who they are. So if gaming has a future, it should be playful, wonderful, enjoyable, humorous, and it should be a play because life is a play and we need to play it well. I'm Michael Padilla, uh, other well known as TFG. I come from the gaming industry. I own an esports organization and a company where we host events. And, you know, we're all about spreading the, the Never Alone message throughout our communities of the well. We've teamed up with the Never Alone gaming team to, you know, put together events that thousands and thousands of people online can watch and and see the message, right? It's, it's all about sending it and making sure that everybody understands what it means. And the most important thing is that you can get help, you know, you're, you're actually never alone, right? That's the whole meaning behind it. And making sure that all these kids, like uh, Deepak said, you know, they're young, they're teenagers, right? They shouldn't have to hide behind a selfie, right? They should be able to come out and and be themselves and show their true colors. So we've partnered together uh, and we're trying to bring and send that message through the gaming world. Well, we're very grateful that yes. you're partnering with us because I think there's only one insight that is necessary. When you're disconnected with life, when you're disconnected with others, when you feel that uh, you can't be intimate and vulnerable, with others because you're not even intimate and vulnerable with yourself, then, you know, as we embark on these games with attention, which means deep listening, affection, deep caring, appreciation, deep gratitude, acceptance, radical acceptance of who we are just as we are, all the science is showing that when there's shared vision, when there's emotional and spiritual bonding, when there's maximum diversity and you have these four A's, attention, affection, appreciation, gratitude, and acceptance, that you give birth to a new story that didn't exist before. So right now the story is one of separation, which expresses itself as anxiety, as anger, as hostility, as guilt, as shame. And finally, the depletion of energy as a result of all these misperceptions which we call depression. Depression is the final outcome. And the cure of that is remove our identity from being separate or feeling separate 
than being actually inseparable from all that exists. And when we are have that connectivity and through gaming, if we can establish that connectivity where people care for each other, where life is treated as an adventure, you move from fear to love, you move from separation to unity, you move from all these pathological symptoms of anxiety, depression, guilt, shame in the direction of love and compassion and empathy and joy and equanimity and humor and you're comfortable with paradox and ambiguity because you understand there's creativity there. So I see that gaming could be a perfect way to engage people in an adventure that takes them from separation to unity. I love that. Absolutely. It's using that connection through emotionally and, and through the many pieces of oneself, bringing it together using gaming, making it playful, like you say, and making it a tool that's being paid attention to. You know, the, the way that a lot of us act, especially the younger generations, it's very exciting, it's fast, it's instant. And so by using gaming, we can make that the tool, the, the medium at which we spread this message and we bring ourselves and each other together. That's amazing. Uh, we're so looking forward to this partnership and the adventure. What do you say, Gabriela? Oh, goodness. I'm just, uh, what I love about gaming is the, the world that you dive into and and it's almost the unknown and and when you're in the unknown and yet you feel safe because you feel safe you feel supported you're on a mission and then there's thousands of other people who are with you on that same mission so you have that same vision i think when you feel safe you're able to be yourself somehow and 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 you're able to experience that you're never alone and and i think part of the mental health journey part of uh, the journey of self-awareness is to truly feel safe with yourself. And if you can truly be yourself with the community, then that means that you're you're supported on that journey, on that adventure, on that adventure, as Deepak says. And, and that's the metaphor of life. We're all on this adventure. We just, you know, need to be the gamer of our lives, right? <laughs> Instead of being played. <laughs> right. Absolutely. I mean, I, I started, you know, as a gamer myself, I've been gaming since I was a kid and I definitely had dark times when I was younger. You know, I went to seven high schools in my first two years just because I moved around a lot. And for me, you know, at that time, gaming was really what I had because I didn't have real life friends. So the people that and the relationships that I built through the time that I spent on the internet actually helped me get through some of the hardest times in my life and then eventually led me to be in this awesome position where I can help others and spread the message and you know grow my communities with the BFC in, in Kangarna. It's a fun journey. <laughs> oh yeah. You transform I love it. that, you know, that pain, that loneliness into a feeling of whole wholeness, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it's always something to look forward to, right? Whenever you have a, a bad day, a hard day at work or school whatever you're doing, right? When you're struggling, you know, when you get home, you can sit down, relax, and just hang out with your friends, play your favorite games. It's always such a, a relief to end your day that way, right? So that's what it was for me. And as I'm listening to you guys, I'm also thinking one of the biggest shortages in the world is authentic leadership. Right now, if you look at the world, national leaders, corporate leaders, they're all gangsters honestly and we want to see a new generation of leaders in the world we could actually train through gaming um, the qualities of what i call soul leadership how do you listen carefully how do you um, uh, uh, maximize emotional and social intelligence how do you expand your awareness from you know very fundamental fight flight responses to intuition, insight, creativity, vision? How do you harness the power of collective imagination? How do you actually make worthy goals and manifest them? How do you take responsibility for your health and well-being, both physical and mental? And also, you know, in gaming, there are so many instances of coincidences and synchronicity which is magical, which is part of the spiritual traditions. We call it grace, good luck, being in the right place at the right time. Gaming actually, because of the unpredictability of the outcomes, harnesses creativity as well. So to use gaming to train leaders in the future as creative visionaries, 
would be an amazing possibility with you guys. So one question I do have, uh, and it's for the both of you, Gabriella and Deepak, uh, with Never Alone Gaming team, uh, how will it be different from other teams? Say, you know, Michael is with uh, Team Kangarna or, or your FaZe Clan or, or different teams like that. What are we doing differently with the Never Alone Gaming team? What we're doing differently is, first of all, we can measure outcomes these days just about everything. In the long term, I'd like to be able to measure the correlations between anxiety, depression, and biological inflammation. But in the beginning, I think if those who enter the gaming process all feel happier after they finish the game, that's a good enough outcome, right? <laughs> I love that, yes. It's just just madness making... and joy making people happy bringing happiness and joy you know, there's yeah. something I you know, know, all the happy. data by the way all the science shows that um, the fastest way to happiness is to make somebody else happy yes. gaming is a way where everybody's making each other happy in a way because you're playing I, I you know i run a team we have over 50 people daily working for us doing various little projects right whether it be someone who's working on graphics they might be having a hard day so whenever i can sit down personally and they're like oh wow you know the boss is sitting down with me and talking and helping me like that's a great feeling right so i always love to do things like that too to to make sure people in our company are always productive and know that they're cared about here at KNG. You know to add on what deepak was saying what, what do we expect for never alone gaming team well, it's, it's really to build a tight-knit community where people feel safe mentally. And when I say that, it's really like comfortable leaning on each other's strengths, sharing what those resiliency tools are, what those strengths are, and noticing and creating that deeper listening on the platform to know when maybe one of the players are, is not feeling you know, well as well and to creating that 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 virtual bond that feels very very safe and real and 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 authentic and and to really like boost the 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 joy the the molecules of of happiness to to for you to carry into your daily life after the game you know for you to walk out of that game and feel like you know what i heard something whilst we were online streaming and we were and and i am now inspired to actually apply that into the relationship i have with my family my loved ones life the planet you know there are so many things so many things that we need to tackle as as a people to to better our world and ourselves each day and so that's why i i love the idea of using that gaming it's it's something that i actually read on the chopra foundation site one time uh, it, it might have even been, you know, I'm paraphrasing here. It's this idea that you cannot tackle an issue properly. You cannot solve a problem properly without understanding it. So that first step is education, educating yourself and the people around you, what the problem is and what we can do about it. One thing I, I want to bring this, this is a question for everybody now, right? A little bit lighter of a question. Uh, but one thing I like to define is everybody is a gamer in some way, right? From, you know, me and my brothers and, and a lot of our friends, competitive gamers. We go to events all around the world and we compete. You know, I mean, Michael here, TFG, he's the Fortnite guy. He knows competitive games, you know. But even, you know, my dad plays on, on his Nintendo Switch downstairs playing some Legend of Zelda. He's a single player guy. Even my mom on her phone playing Sudoku or, or you know, everybody has their game. Before we had video games, there was even just the board games. The question that I have for you all is, how much do you game? You know, how often and what is your game? You know, what is your main thing right now? I'm beginning to learn a little bit about it. And so I'm actually looking forward to learning a lot more about gaming. But here's my ultimate vision of what gaming could do. Could make the, what we call the game of life a much bigger adventure. And Gabriella did mention stepping into the unknown, which is the only way to experience creativity because the known is the prison of the past. It's already happened. There's nothing in the known that's going to make you a creative person. You'll just be another algorithm with minor revisions of 
previous algorithms. So for me right now, the whole focus is how can I play a game where every day I find a better version of myself. So every day, in every way, I can increase my physical, mental, emotional capacity for joy, curiosity, wonder, inspiration, higher vision, and healing. That's my game. If you were to play a video game, though, I'm sure you might have heard one or two. Would you be interested in trying a game sometime? Yes, absolutely. Well, any in specific you might have heard of that that interests you a little bit? You know, I actually created a game 10 years ago, mm -hmm. which involved movement and communication with eyes and facial movements and gestures, no speech. And people were communicating amazingly well and emotionally bonding as a result of the body language that they were learning from each other, all without having ever done that before. Gabriella, same thing. Games, how often? What do you play? What, what are you into? So when I was much younger, I, at the time of PC, <laughs> PC gaming, I know gaming is still PC, but when you only had the CD-ROM possibility. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I would be at that time obsessed with these building business games. So Transport Tycoon and like literally like reinvesting your money into you know, building a community. So I was like always amazed by that. So that I played for two years nonstop and became a trillionaire on that game. <laughs> I was like impressed with my capacity for investment. But it was a great tool, actually. It was very educational. And I actually studied economics thanks to that. And we've come a long way yeah, since you know, I did a Scrabble. Since... I used to play Scrabble just to learn spelling. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so you learn these things. And then after that, I went for a little stint on um, Game Boy, you know, the, the heavy. <laughs> and yeah. that was all Mario Bros. I, I, I just love adventure, you know, yeah. so adventure diving into the different worlds. And I love that. I do want to challenge you on this one, Michael. I know your name as the community knows you, is the Fortnite guy. I do want to hear how much you play Fortnite, but I also want to hear, when you're not playing Fortnite, wh what do you game? What What is your... So, I actually don't play Fortnite that much, right? I'm more of a guy who talks about Fortnite, and people on my team play Fortnite, right? But for me, uh, a big game, when I was about eight, I discovered it was called RuneScape. And it's this open world game where there's like endless possibilities. Like it is so big. You could play for 20 years and you still will not be able to complete the game, right? And it's almost like a game of life, you know, like Deepak was talking about. It's really just going through the motions of growing and understanding people, meeting people, doing quests, adventures, right? It's so in depth. And honestly, through that game, I feel like I, I educated myself so much on real life through that. By the time I was, I'd say 14, I feel like I understood a lot of things that some of my peers maybe at school didn't understand because I experienced things that, you know, real life adults would go through, but through a video game at such a young age. So RuneScape always has a, a close spot in my heart for me. I feel like it, it helped me a lot grow and educate myself early on. But, you know, of course I love Fortnite. It's a, uh, you know, where I started my business and everything, and we've done great with that, but it, it's always gonna be RuneScape for me. I haven't been able to touch it in about a year because I'm so busy. Uh, I guess the game that I do play when I have time right now is Apex Legends. Uh, our team did win the championship, so I figured I, I better pick that game up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the Kingarden team for winning the ALGS. You, Absolutely. Job. Only bigger things to come in the future. Is there anything else anybody wanted to say that, you know, small snippets that you want to shoot into the world uh, for yes. us to use? So we are very grateful for this opportunity to work with you. <laughs> I'm very grateful to work with all of you as well. You're all wonderful and your teams, especially shout out to Ali, Ariana, and yes. everybody who's been helping with the Never Alone Gaming team. Uh, and Kangarna, BFC, and Terry's, everybody who's been uh, a part of all of it. The Chopra Foundation especially has been doing uh, a large amount of, you know, effort toward this greater cause and as deepak said a few times i, I remember it the goal we're going to reach a, a billion people yes one billion people. absolutely and i think we've already had a good start I, over the summer we've reached millions so i think if we continue to do so we can completely achieve that goal thank you thank you is that? so yeah. exciting i am I've just become a super mom officially in my son's realm. So just so you know, 
thanks to you guys. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's official. I, I can now have that title in my CV. <laughs> you know, looking forward to the future of what that will do for me <laughs> in my life, <laughs> magically. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Well, I'm going to cut the recording a after one thing. My, my friend didn't believe that I was going to to meet with all these wonderful people. So wave hi to Dominic. Hi, Dominic and your family. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>